Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy and Cuban. In this video, we're gonna look at what the heck is a gateway cluster and why you should care about that. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the items from both Patrick and myself. All right, if you watched the previous video I did on how to set up a gateway and how to use gateways, when you install a first physical gateway, you're installing it on a Windows machine, it will automatically create the gateway cluster for you. So a gateway cluster is a collection of physical gateways. And so they are a way that you can leverage high availability as well as potential load balancing if you've got high demand or high load. Let's look at how to actually set that up and what it looks like. So, you know, I like to do it here on Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Enough of all this talking. Let's head over to my machine. All right. I am on my machine. I already have the gateway cluster installed. One thing we can do if we go to the gear, we can come down to manage gateways and connections. If I go to on-premises data gateways, my gateway demo. So this is what I set up in the previous video. So definitely go check that out. If I go to info, you'll actually see that this is installed. It's installed on one of my physical machines and it's available and ready to use. Great. So let's go ahead and install another node into my gateway demo cluster. So I'll go ahead and just go through the installer. While that's installing, if you want to know where to go get that installer, just go inside of Microsoft Fabric. You'll see this little download icon and there you can go to data gateway. Make sure you're getting the standard gateway, also used to be called the enterprise gateway. The personal gateway does not support gateway clusters. After the gateway is installed, we need to sign in so we can configure this gateway. And here is the moment that we get to make a choice. One, we can register a new gateway on this computer or we can migrate, restore, or take over an existing gateway. In this case, we're actually creating a new gateway. We're not trying to restore it and or we're not trying to migrate it from another machine. I'm adding a second node to an existing cluster. So it is a new gateway. All right, let's go ahead and hit next. We'll give it a name. We'll say gateway demo two. And this is where I can now add it to an existing gateway cluster. And then we can choose the cluster that we want. And then we give the recovery key for the cluster. And then we'll say configure. That's it. The gateway's installed and whatnot. So the second node is ready to go on the given cluster. By default, the cluster is going to use a failover type approach and not a load balance type approach. So I'll show you in a second where you can go and change that. The other thing to keep in mind when we've got multiple nodes in a given cluster, when you go to update a gateway, gateway, you want to make sure they're all on the same version. So it's important to keep all of the nodes updated. These always exist on a physical Windows machine. And so you've got to go and update that. Today, as of the recording of this video, there's not a mechanism to auto update gateways. So it's something you have to kind of orchestrate on your own. The other thing, if there are given settings for the gateway, you want to make sure those settings are consistent. So I showed in the previous video where you can go and set a given service account for the Windows service of the gateway. You want to make sure those service accounts are the same across all of the gateway clusters. Otherwise it could cause some problems. So we're ready to go. Let's go and close this. Now, if we go back into our demo, we'll still see that it just shows one. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. So it goes and gets that updated metadata back to our cluster. We'll go to demo. And now we see that both of them are available and we can see the given status for these and they're online. You'll see one is primary and one is secondary. And if you select those, you can go ahead and remove them. You can also disable them or enable them. You may ask like, why would I enable or disable a gateway. This is a good approach to do if you think about updating the gateway. Maybe I want to disable a given gateway so that it's not being serviced from an HA perspective or the round robin as I'm updating the gateway, right? So I'll disable it, update the gateway, and then re-enable it as a way to maintain that gateway. In terms of changing it between failover and load balancing aspects of it, if we go to the ellipsis next to the gateway and go to settings, there is a setting under general here called distribute requests across all active gateways in this cluster. So if this is unchanged, Checked, that means we're in a failover state. So if we check this box and we save it, then that means each physical node within the gateway cluster will end up servicing requests that come in for that gateway cluster. The load balance, it's a random item. And so you're not necessarily guaranteed which node you're going to hit according to the documentation. So be aware of that. I'll also have links in the description to some PowerShell capabilities that you can use against the gateway. There's two different sets of PowerShells. The older set of PowerShells actually lets you set which physical node is the the primary node of the gateway cluster, the newer gateway commands, I couldn't find a way to do that. So you'll have to use the older gateway commands to, to actually do that. And if you want a video on how to do that, let me know in the comments below. Happy to do it. I'd love to know your questions. Are you leveraging clusters? How many nodes do you have in that cluster? And what's been your just approach and how you manage those items? As always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.